Hi, this is Ben from 561 Music Podcast. Right now, we're trying to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube. It just helps us get out there more. It also enables us to monetize the podcast, to make it better, do more advertising for it and things like that. Subscribe to the podcast and hit the notifications button. That would be doing us a really big favor. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to 561 Music. My name's Ben. And I'm Hector. How you doing, mate? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Got some stuff going on, but it's it's all good. You know, just life. The the great wheel keeps on turning, doesn't it? Yeah, man. It's the uh, circle of life, unfortunately. But yeah, uh, yeah you just got to keep on, keep on keeping on, man. Exactly. So, yeah. We had a relatively uh, fun weekend, didn't we? We played up at, in Fort Pierce at Sailfish Brewery. We did. That place is always a good time and it was a really good crowd there and i met my new best friends they thought i was 30 so you know i'll oh, go, I'll go right. with it they're my new best friends now so yeah totally <laughs> and there was a, i remember because the conversation was that they, they were complaining that they were too old to learn how to play an instrument yeah 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 and then you told them that i picked up the double bass uh, a little less than two years ago and he said oh yeah but that guy's 30 and then yeah, i yeah. kissed him on the mouth and no <laughs> I didn't, I didn't. but yeah he's my new best friend yeah um in other news we got a puppy today Oh, wow. Yeah. So we have that 11-year-old uh, German Shepherd, Guinness. Okay. Uh, you know, big shout out to Guinness. <laughs> and because uh, I know he listens to the podcast. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Great consumer and, uh, of media, that dog. Yeah. And we uh, we brought home another little German Shepherd puppy today. And oh, it, it is, is a German Shepherd. Yeah, six weeks old, man. It's a tiny little sucker. You brought it up earlier and you were saying you were having um, some trouble thinking of a name for the dog. So we, if anyone was listening to this episode. Yeah, we are. Uh, my wife and I have probably gone through five 600 names at least that I keep throwing out and she keeps throwing out and you know anything she likes I hate and anything I like she hates and we can't seem to agree that's what 25 years of marriage will do to you <laughs> and uh and uh, so yeah if anybody has any suggestions Dog that names. would be amazing <laughs> yeah man <laughs> all right so uh, we have Dirty Rivals with us today. How's it going, guys? What's up? What's Good up? How's it going? Yeah, How's it yeah going? thanks for coming in. So we've got um, Stephen over there. You're on the drums, aren't you? Yes, the band? sir. And there's no bass in your band, but we've got two guitarists. We've got Jacob here Jake. and uh, Nelson. How's it going? It's going good. That's right, yeah. man. Well. I'll apply for the bass position later. Just, we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> we'll really bad. We'll, so. call you. we'll call you. Is this all the members of the band? Yep. Yep. Just us yeah, three. Cool. Yep. Well, thanks for coming in. Yeah, Appreciate thanks for having it. us. Where, where do you guys hail from? Um, we kind of always say we're from Delray Beach, but right. um, our guitarist, Nelson, over here is from Delray. I'm from Coral Springs, and then he's from Boynton. So Delray's kind of the middle point. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. My kid. Um, mm -hmm. When did you all like get together and start as a band? When did that start? Um, Stephen and I had 2020. Yeah, Stephen hit me up in like 2020. We had recently both just gotten out of bands. Um, right. And he hit me up. He DM'd me on Instagram. I was like, we hey. went to Chipotle. We went to Chipotle. Yeah. yeah He's like, you want to start a band? <laughs> and we went to Chipotle <clears throat> and we talked about it. And then we jammed at my house. Yeah. And then we met Nelson. Through they found me on the street, pretty much. We found Nelson on the street. Yeah. <laughs> no, we found him on a. It was like a, it's like a Tinder for musicians. Christian Tinder for, Mingle. Tinder for musicians. Yeah, yeah. no, Christian, <laughs> Christian Mingle for musicians. I, literally, like, I was watching football with my buddy Mike at, like, at, like the Ale House. <laughs> right. And I just see, like, the commercial for it. So I'm like, oh, I'll download it, see what's going on. And, like, there was no one on it. And, like, I literally <laughs> deleted Like, it didn't even, I didn't delete it because it was on my phone, but I didn't touch it for, like, six months. And then this beautiful man over here hit me up on it. <laughs> oh, cool. What's it called? Well, I don't um, even know. Uh, I don't even remember. <laughs> like, there were like band literally three people or something on like that. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. And it's four. It's four bands. It's yeah. for it's for musicians to connect with each mm. other. Don't it's bother those things. things. Yeah. It was only one person on it. And they already <laughs> yeah. picked, they already yeah. picked yeah. him up. Yeah. He was, he was They've already diamond, got him. So. Yeah. Diamond in the rough for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's neat though. So you guys got started in early 2020. Then. Yep. Yeah. Right. Uh, then literally. the world went to shit. Yeah. And now it sucked. You guys had a whole year to like get your sound together, right? Yeah. No. It honestly was kind of a blessing in disguise, just because like. We had, had the all the time to, in the world. Exactly, just to get to know each other and write yeah. and trial and error. That's and exactly what happened with um, Hector joining the band. Um, when everything kind of shut down, uh, the previous bass player needed to go and look after his mother and, uh, and ended up moving away. And we, yeah, we had all this time all of a sudden. So, we, gotta, you know, we, we were able to sort of 
regroup and figure out and yeah. get the sound together and kind of turn into the, the the band that we are today so yeah. actually it was a blessing in disguise for us too yeah, I yeah. Can totally honestly relate. it's 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 great when you just have time to kind of get to know each other and write and yeah. just hang out and not worry about shows and absolutely how, how old are you guys you know, roughly the same age I'm 25. Right. I'm 22. The old man. I'm 22 as well. I oh, gotcha. Spring chickens. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could be your dad, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, all right. So one of the things I like to do is ask people about um, how they found themselves getting into music and um, what their early sort of pathway through that was and things like that. Um, why don't we start uh, with Nelson? Uh, so for me, <laughs> um, I picked up. My dad kind of showed me rock and roll and just like, you know, the general good stuff like Led Zeppelin, Queen, ACDC. And then nice. I stumbled upon Metallica and right. that was the end. Pretty how, much. how old were you at this point? I was like 10 and I remember I was watching, like we were just watching TV, me and my brother, and it was like VH1. It was like top one of, the, like one of those top 40s and they started playing the... Metallica Master of Puppets from 1989 the Seattle show yeah. yeah and I just saw James Hetfield doing that uh da -da 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 and I'm like all right well that's like the sickest thing I've ever seen right, right. and now I'm playing Explorer I have like the wristbands and everything and just that just changed everything and then the real other I really only have two bands that like I truly like love and the other one is uh, Avenged Sevenfold Nice. Yeah, man. Yeah. They're like Metallica on steroids. <laughs> yeah, and they have all those like melodic parts and everything, and it was just kind of like I walked in. I actually walked in a buddy's house. My buddy had their live at LBC playing, and like they were like strippers in the background and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, well, those guys look pretty cool, too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Avengers Sevenfold are amazing. Some of the guitar work in there. Oh, just yeah. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable, yeah. And just like yeah. kind of the picture they paint with their songs and everything yeah. is just yeah. inspiring. No doubt, man. Yeah. What about you, Jacob? How did you find yourself getting into music? Um, honestly, it's kind of a long story for me. Um, yeah, it's a world, we've got all the time <laughs> in the world, man. Tell us all about it. So, um, I, when I was very little, I had a pretty rare bone condition. Um, I, I don't even know what it was called, but um, it basically I broke my bones super easily, so I can never really like play sports. Right. Um, so my parents bought me a guitar when I was like five, and they were like, yeah. "Here's something to distract you." <laughs> right. <laughs> so yes. I was like, okay, <laughs> sweet, yeah. So I just started playing guitar. Um, I remember my first guitar. I like used to play with a nickel because I didn't have a pick. Yeah. So I would just like walk around with a nickel and my acoustic guitar. That's my like, Brian crappy May little like plays with a coin. Oh, you? really? Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. That's pretty sick. Yeah. No, honestly, like the sound you get out of it's kind of cool. Yeah. But yeah. um, yeah, no, I I. I played i started playing acoustic when i was like five switched over to electric um and just kind of have been doing it since it's like yeah, pretty much all i've done with my life <laughs> nothing else to amount to oh, just yeah. music Do you have much sort <laughs> of uh, formal training with it like lessons and yeah such? yeah I, I took guitar lessons um and then i started taking vocal lessons um i've been kind of in and out of bands my whole life and right so what kind of music here. were you um like, did your parents listen to music when you were young? Oh, yeah. My dad listened to, like, Boston. Boston was his favorite band, so that's kind of one of my favorite bands, too. Gotcha. Um, Boston, Lake Nelson, kind of Led Zeppelin, like, ACDC. Yeah. Like, all the classics. So sure. I grew up on classic rock. <laughs> yeah. I grew up, like, hating every other genre but classic rock. Right, so Classic right. rock is the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only way. That's great. And, yeah, that kind of developed. The religion of the gator. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> what about you, Stephen? How did you find yourself playing the drums? What did you have a supportive family and musically when you were young? Um, I I grew up kind of like not really having much of like a a talent until I was like eleven or twelve, right. and then I discovered like two thousands rock, like Three Days Grace and like Breaking Benjamin. Yeah, and I was like, that's pretty cool. I tried to play guitar. And it was too much for my little brain. Like, right. Just too much, like too many like letters and shit. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I started playing drums, and from there, like within like a year or two, I was playing at church and playing in bands. And, right. Yeah, and just like diving deeper into music. Oh neat. Uh, yeah. I find it hysterical when a drummer tells me that that they they can't play guitar because it's too much but like you know you, the coordination for drums is like <laughs> yeah, ridiculous that's the thing. both it feet wasn't both easy. hands <laughs> it know? still wasn't easy you yeah, know yeah, yeah. we're talking six strings versus like you know 12 drums and cymbals <laughs> i think <laughs> it was just like looking at a guitar and just like seeing how many frets and how many strings and how many combinations of notes it's there are on the whole guitar yeah it was just a little intimidating to yeah. me. and then with drums it was like 
I just get to hit stuff. So like, <laughs> let me just do that. Yeah. And yeah. not to say it was easy because it was still pretty difficult, but like, I don't know. I just feel like it was more natural for me to play that. No, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I did like in terms of, uh, again, in terms of like, sort of any kind of training how did you did you go through the sort of lessons and everything like that i tried lessons for like maybe like a few months and it just i don't know it just didn't work for me well i wonder um, i mean sometimes you only need a few anyway it's like if yeah you, it, once you get you know so it, it depends on what less you know the reason that you you're having the lessons i think some people just do it to be accountable you yeah. know which is really helpful and then um and if you're already accountable to yourself and you don't need that, then, you know, lessons might not be for you. And especially if you've already had a few and you just kind of, you know, you understand what you're meant to be doing. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. I kind of grew up more on YouTube, kind of like learning stuff like that, like Drumeo. And yeah, just I love like, that Drumeo. Yeah, it's learning great. just like the basics on there and then just playing my favorite songs like in my headphones. Yeah, that blonde guy on Drumeo, he's yeah. so cool. He's a, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've def I can't remember his name, but Jared Falk. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've definitely uh, at one point was just directly ripping my lessons off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's drunk. insane. Yeah, yeah. He's awesome. Um, so, do you guys have a writing process when it comes to uh, writing your songs? Um, who who is would you say out of you guys sort of does the most writing in the band? Honestly, um, we all kind of bring different things to the table. Um, sometimes, right. like Nelson, will bring an idea or like a chord progression he had, and even like a melody. Sometimes, and we'll work around it. Sometimes, I'll bring a melody to the table, and we'll write a song around it. Sometimes, we just come up with something while jamming. Yeah, um, it's re it really kind of just like depends on the day. Um, sure, okay. But yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot more of like a free process for us, I guess. We kind of yeah. just whenever it happens, it happens. We don't like to try to like sit down and be like, all right, let's write a song. Gotcha. I feel like it gets so a little. There's enough like ideas just sort of bubbling away that you don't have right. to do that. Right. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We want, we like it when it comes like naturally because like I feel cool. like when you sit down and you try to force it, it it always comes out a little bit. It yeah, almost yeah, sounds a little bait. bit for it. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. like it kind of just has to come to you. And anytime like I even hear an idea, like even if I'm just driving, I just like voice memo it. Sure. And then I'll send it to everybody. Be like, Yo, do you guys like this? And yeah. Yeah. We'll go from there and. Yeah, yeah. The voice memo has changed. Oh, yeah. Tri has really changed has. writing, man. Like, yeah. I, you know, well, there's artists now, like, I don't know if you know who Charlie Puth is. He literally yeah. just made an album off of voice memos. Like, he just, like, yeah, that's, that's the memos thing. and just, like, put them into Pro Tools. And <laughs> that's like, the thing. I mean, back, you know, back, back, back in the day, I mean, I sound like I'm 100 years old, but back in the day, basically, you know, I would sit down if I was trying to write something, you know, it's, or if I had an idea, it was like the mad scramble to find, find, like, a pen and paper or something, <laughs> you know, and then, and then, you know, if, if by the time you got to it, you forgot some of it, then so be it. And that was just lyrics. If you had an idea for a melody, you had to keep humming it to yourself until yeah. you got to an instrument yeah. to actually solidify it in your head. Because like, yeah. it wasn't no, you know, hey, uh, let me just hum <laughs> this to myself, you know. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's changed the way people write music now. It Not certainly really has, no yeah. doubt about it. Hey, do you have any um, when it comes to lyrical content? Is there a, is there any kind of theme there is there anything that you find yourself writing about more than other things um a lot of our songs are kind of depressing honestly <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've kind of yeah. noticed that recently like none of our songs are happy some of them sound happy but they're not it's like those um, are some of the who best hurt songs Jacob? <laughs> i don't who know if that says something about who like hurt me. Jacob? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> no honestly it's it's honestly like whatever i feel like kind of caters to the like nelson i remember i think yeah the first song we wrote was red yeah. and the name of the song the song lyrics were written around like the name of the song and he used to like write um like on his ideas he would just have like colors as like uh, the name that was that was a Ste oh that, that was that Steven. was a me thing yeah Steven. his oh. was his was 19. oh his was the and numbers we, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, the same yeah, thing yeah, yeah. yeah so so the first two songs we ever wrote were based off of that so like he had red named as like the color red just to like color identify the song like some of the demos yeah so like one was red one was green and Before then the i wrote just kind of around the idea of red and like making like red kind of into like a mood and like a feeling oh nice um, yeah and yeah, that's then creative. 19 that's cool. i kind of wrote around like just like being 19 and just kind of like being in that like teenage like end of teenage like yeah. just it's a weird time. Weird time, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, too a lot old of to our be ideas. a kid, too young to really do anything. Exactly. <laughs> it's the exactly. Worst. Yeah, no, the like worst. the worst age. I mean, 19, especially in sure. you know rounds here. I always really feel for kids that age, and it's one of the reasons why I think you know more all ages venues would be good and stuff because 
it's like what do you do with yourself when you when you're that age when you're too young to drink or go to certain bars but you're you know, you want something to do at night. And uh, so what ends up happening to so many kids is they just get arrested sitting in their cars smoking dope and stuff like that. It's, it yeah. sucks, you know. It's just a really difficult age to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah and like every other country, the age, like legal drinking age is like not 21. Yeah. <laughs> so like a lot of like people that are like between the ages of 18 and 21, yeah, like you said, like they don't really know what to do with themselves. Yeah, totally. Because I feel like it's human like nature to yeah. want to like fit in with, you know, people like, yeah. Your age. Yeah. And, so do you guys do you guys share lyric writing or is it primarily you? Uh, we kind of share it a little bit. Okay, um, it's mostly Nelson and I kind of just bounce ideas off each other. Um, okay. I usually like kind of solidify the lyrics, um, but if he has an idea, he'll bring it to the table and just kind of work around it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. If I wrote lyrics, it would take like ten years. So if I, I just kind of come up with one catchy little thing and I give it to Jacob, I'm like, take this, <laughs> <laughs> do something, do with something it. with this, <laughs> make it good. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you've got an EP, haven't you? Wreck Entertainment that's out at the yeah. moment. Yes. Um, you were saying to me earlier that um, it just sort of slowly materialized as an EP. Like you just kind of brought out one single, then the next, and then it, mm -hmm. and then it, and then now it's an EP. Is yeah. that, that what happened? Yeah, yeah. So um, our first single, or our first song we wrote was Red. Um, and we released that uh, summer of 2021. And we kind of decided to base the EP around that. Like we didn't even really know we were going to do an EP. Um, and then we just started like writing more, and uh, we were like, "Hey, let's just make an EP out of this." So we yeah. released a, another yeah. single a couple months later, um, recorded a few more songs, and just then Wreck Entertainment was born. Yeah, where, where are you guys recording at? Um, we're working with. Um, I'm not sure if you know who Fame on Fire is, um, but their singer uh, Brian Kuznets is a producer, and okay. uh, right. we work with him down in Delray. Okay, okay. Yeah, is that at his house? Uh, it was at his house. We actually did the EP at his house, but he has a studio now called oh, nice. Boardwalk. So if you guys need any more to record, Boardwalk. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, Boardwalk Studio Boardwalk, down in yeah. Del Rey. Good stuff. Yeah, uh, is it is it like downtown Del Rey, or is it like a bit... It's, <laughs> uh, is it? No, it's on Linton. Yeah, yeah okay. so it's kind of... kind of Somewhere um, you wouldn't expect. Yeah. It's it like is. It's like... Taco Bell. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like the Narnia door. You just kind of like look at it, and you open it, and you're like... <laughs> yeah. It's just like a storage yeah. unit. Yeah, you open it and it's like. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. I like, would expect a studio to be behind a Taco yeah. Bell. Exactly. <laughs> That's where, where, best where else would you are, put yeah. a studio? <laughs> That's, where That's yeah. great. Where else would you gotta, put a Taco gotta, Bell? Got to eat, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you guys don't have um, a bass player. How do you fill out those sort of frequencies when you're playing live? Well, we used to um, not even play with a bassist. We used to just, like, I have a drop pedal and I would just drop it. Yeah. an octave and make my guitar into a bass but sure. then we realized we can only get away with that for so long right so right. we've kind of just been using fill-ins um, okay. we, we've had a couple permanent bases but didn't work out so yeah back to us three just got it using yeah. temps for now and we got a few good friends who are willing to help us out for the time being yeah. you know you can get a lot done with an octave pedal you know, honestly you really can yeah, yeah. like yeah. I don't, like royal blood i don't know if you know who royal blood yeah. is but they they're literally just a bassist and a guitarist yeah and, or a bassist and a drummer and they just Use the octopedal. Yeah, mm -hmm. our, our band's <laughs> our band's a trio. Um, ben plays guitar. I play an upright bass, and then we have a banjo player. And um, but every now and then they they hire the duo, and it's just Ben and James. Oh, okay. And Ben Ben uses an octave pedal and gets yeah. away with me not being there. Stuff, yeah, so. no, it, it's 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 really sick. Yeah, I have to simplify what I'm playing, and I can't do like as many kind of noodly solos and things. Yeah, but. but by the same token, just the kind of meat and potatoes of it, you know, it holds together relatively okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that's kind of what became our problem was we had a lot of, like... Um, guitars. We, yeah, we had a lot of guitar parts, <laughs> and we right. couldn't play all the guitar parts with the octave pedal because I was kind of trying to, like, hold the bass line, yeah. and it just wasn't filling up enough, so yeah. we've been playing with the bassist since. So who would you say that um, some of your musical inspirations for the band would be? In terms of, like, you know, what you've Foo attempted Fighters. to sound Foo like? Foo Fighters, okay. probably, yeah. like, Queens. Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing but Probably thieves. Like nothing but thieves. Yeah, yeah Royal Blood. Try to like, like we said. Yeah, we like kind of try to keep the old school kind of rock flavor, but put a little modern twist on it. So yeah, like, cool. Nothing yeah. but thieves. Royal Blood. Stuff like that. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense to me. Yeah. And yeah, and, you know, Queens of the Stone Age and all that kind of desert kind of rock. Oh yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah, it's a bit dancey as well. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We like groovy stuff for sure. Yeah. We found ourselves writing a lot more like groovy kind of. Like 19. Yeah. yeah. No. Just stuff. groovy, funky stuff. Yeah. How much are you guys playing out at the moment? Like, do you find this, do you playing gigs? Yeah, this this summer's been pretty pretty crazy. We, uh, we've we been playing probably three, four times a month. Um, oh, nice. We actually just played Revolution live 
uh, so that was fun. Yeah, yeah. we we did a uh, Wet Mango Fest down in Miami. Yeah. Um, I think What's that? I don't know what that is. It's brand new, actually. It's really cool. Um, they did it, f- I think their first time was last year, um, but it was all online because of COVID. Right, so this yeah. was their first year in person. But um, they basically like set up a stage at a skate park okay. and like nice. literally invested all of the money like into the stage and the production of the event. So it was it was really cool. Um, huge the, skate park. Huge, huge, huge skate like park. Indoor yeah. skate park. Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah, the stage was sick and the sound was great and it was just it was a good time. So you're all the way down. Is it you lived in Coral Springs? I live in Coral Springs. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's like a lot further down there. And I, I think that, you know, it's it's almost you've got the sort of Palm Beach County vibe and things yeah. that go on and then the miami vibe is quite it, different it's it's, you know? it's, it's really you got your foot in that world yeah it's it's really weird how different the scenes are like in each county like yeah, miami uh, yeah. is completely separate from broward which is like kind of where we find ourselves and then palm beach is like a whole nother yeah like yeah. territory so it's, it's completely it, separate yeah, yeah it's really weird honestly yeah, like totally. you'd think they'd all kind of be one big like south big, florida scene yeah, but yeah. It's more like and it's, it's like, hard. I see. I see a lot of bands. I mean, I've been around in a lot of bands, you know, long enough to know that like it's it's hard. Like if you find yourself in a Broward band, you might venture into the Miami uh, Palm Beach areas a little bit here and there, but mm-hmm. you're pretty much a Broward band. Right. Same thing oh, yeah, if you're exactly. a Miami band or if you're a if you're a Palm Beach County band. It's hard yeah. to venture into some of these other counties. Yeah. Right? I mean, the fan bases too are like almost completely separate. <laughs> but it's, but it's really odd because it doesn't work like that from Palm Beach County North. Like, we're, yeah. we're based out of Palm Beach County, and we play all over Palm Beach County, but we also play a lot in, uh, was it uh, Treasure Coast? Oh, Treasure Coast. Treasure but that Coast. sort yeah. of does have its own scene in a way. Treasure Coast does have its own scene, but but it tends to bleed over with Palm Beach County a lot more yeah. than, than some of the other counties do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's almost like the Palm Beach County bands all play up in the Treasure yeah, Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of work up that way. Yeah, you know? yeah. When you're playing out, like, what kind of... Um, it, it, are they all original shows, or do you ever do those kind of three or four hour gig type things? No, it, it's we pretty much stick to like forty five set. minute sets. Yeah, yeah. we just do original stuff mostly. What are some of the bands you guys play with? Um, oh gosh, you find yourself um, on supports, or do you generally do your own shows? Um, like it, Modern Freaks, probably like yeah, oh, nice. AWOL, which is another band I play in. Um, who else? Um, yeah, um, Nonfiction, they're good friends. We're of kind of bouncing right. like between honestly like all three of the scenes like we don't yeah. really necessarily play with like one person at one time yeah like, yeah especially like this summer we spent on like we really wanted to make sure that we went around to everywhere and kind of put our foot into everywhere so yeah it makes sense yeah have you played a propaganda and uh, oh yeah. yeah yeah that was our, our first show a good few times <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. Right. i actually gotcha. live right behind propaganda now oh really yeah oh, oh nice neat. yeah did yeah. you say do you say you played with uh young fiction no, I, I play with a wall. Uh, no, yeah. but you, you guys we played with Young Fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My son just became their uh, their drummer. Oh, oh no way! Oh, yeah. oh, we're I, actually I, like pretty good friends with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Koa and uh, yeah, Koa, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dylan, um, Dylan. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. So they had uh, their drummer Ethan. Uh, was really good friends with my son Gavin. They mm-hmm. went to school together, high school together. My son just graduated high school, and he's at that awkward age now, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, but he's cool they, though. He's, he has played the drums a, on our album. Uh, yeah, he's a good kid, and he uh, um, he plays really, you know, he plays drums really well. And Ethan and uh, and him were really good friends. And Ethan was going off to college, and the guys were looking for another drummer, and Ethan yeah. suggested him. So he uh, he just played the, his first show with them last Friday down oh, wow. at uh, Poorhouse next to oh, Revolutions. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And Revolutions, I think, was having a big show or something, so they that they got the spill out, oh, spill nice. over. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. That's around such the a weird street. It is. Yeah, it's revolution like a, it's, and then poor house. Yeah, and then there's like <laughs> all the stuff in between. I've played the poor house so many times. Uh, it's a yeah. brutal gig. Man. It, is, <laughs> but it's, it is, but it isn't. It, it is if it's just the poor house that night. But if they're having a show at Revolutions and you play late enough at poor house, you get that spillover. Oh, I'm not crowd. saying it's bad. It's just always some. Oh, it, it's, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah, and <laughs> there's also all like it is, it all is. the other like bars yeah. around it are just like completely polar opposites of each other. There's yeah, like yeah, poor house, yeah. and then there's a club, and then you'll see this guy walk out over here with. With like a speedo and a cat mask on, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you're just kind of like we have that guy on next week. <laughs> <laughs> Parking yeah, is like twenty I, yeah, bucks too. On I top hope of it. the guys from the poorhouse don't get me wrong on that one. I think the place is great, and I enjoy playing there. I guess what I meant is like it's always somehow crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Like, <laughs> yeah, that whole sh- yeah, just it's yeah. a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, Propaganda totally. gets like that too. Yeah, like a little bit. Just that it whole does. that whole Lake Worth strip is just yeah. a wild card. Hey, <laughs> that's my strip. <laughs> He's like, I live there now, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> I've adopted it. I was in a band with Matt, who owned the pl- who ran the place for the oh, longest yeah, time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, no name Scar Band, 
um, which we just broke up about three weeks, a month ago. Oh. Well, um, you didn't really. Well, not break up. up. That's Matt's a big move, word. Yeah, We're Matt's moving away. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. And now it's got new ownership. And we played there since the new owners took over, haven't we? Oh, it was just me uh, and James. It was you and James I was out of town. Yeah, yeah. pretty good yeah. gig. Did yeah, no, it's, a, it's a really sick place, honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So the new owners and stuff. Um, that have, have we? I forget what? their names. We the new owners? They're nice, though. I don't think we have. I think the last we show we the, played there. The guy with the mohawk. That's, that's Matt. Matt. That's yeah. Matt. Yeah. 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 Oh, so that has guy. changed since yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just oh. recently. Because oh. like, they were going like to close. the last few months. They were going to close down, weren't they, for a second? Yeah, and then but they, they, yeah. But they sold got it. bought out. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it's a, it a husband and wife that bought it. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, really they're originally nice. Floridians, but they moved up to, they lived in Brooklyn for like a really long time, like over 10 years, I think. And then they came back and they're taking over Brooklyn now. Yeah. Nice. They're cool. I'm glad it's getting saved because it's yeah. a sick venue yeah well there's not <laughs> yeah. there's not i mean and, and i feel like you have more of this down you know broward miami area but in the palm Beach county area there's not a lot of original yeah. music venues no you know, there's really none like outside of prop what, what is respect there? respectable yeah. yeah yeah respectable's prop i mean but you know there there used to be a bunch of you know raised downtown blues there was a spankies i mean there was a there was a ton of them you know years ago but yeah. it's just I j- it's the struggle now to find a place to play original stuff yeah. i think just the live music scene in south florida has just kind of gotten taken over by like cover stuff and it's, it, yeah. it has <laughs> it and, and you know kill billy's plays that's the band that we're in you know we we play a lot of those three and four hour gigs mm-hmm. um but you know but the difference is we we go in there for three hours and we'll, we'll play like two hours worth of covers and we'll yeah. slip an hour <laughs> worth of originals yeah. in between stuff <laughs> nice, nice. So. yeah hybrid kind of yeah. thing yeah, yeah we try sure. and get as many of our own tunes in there Absolutely. as we can and and as we write more and more, you know, that's increasing. Yeah. I mean, honestly, what we've noticed, too, is that no one really, just as long as every now and again you throw them a bone, yeah. no one yeah. cares if you play your own stuff. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. yeah like this, uh, half the time as well, if you're playing anything other than Sweet Home Alabama, they don't know the cover you're playing anyway. So, yeah, all they're know. doing is, like, they'll hear a little riff, they'll look at the friends and go, and then they go back to what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, we found a way to make it work for us, uh, for us though, because so we can sort of do both. I think I was actually just talking to um, uh, my brother-in-law about the the way we should tour next time, because this time we we went away and we did a bunch of relatively well-paid kind of longer gigs, sure. and then and then we used that to, to cover the recording. Yeah, yeah. And and I think you know next time when we go, we should we should do the pub gigs on the way there. And then when we're there, do a bunch of not paying, you know, like sure. gigs to get like our name out there. Yeah. Exposure type, you know, re- proper like original gigs. Sure, sure, And sure. then gig our way back, making the money again, you yeah. know, and then have the tour pay for itself like that. Yeah. I think the difference was that for this particular tour, we were recording and it was exactly. costing us a freaking arm and a leg. We just, we just did a short tour a couple of weeks and... We went up to uh, to Memphis, oh, nice. and then we stayed three days, three days in Memphis, four days in Memphis, and three of those days we recorded at Sun Studios. So, oh wow, that's oh, awesome! So it was really yeah, fun, but fun. really expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's totally. awesome. So we're you know halfway through paying Hector back for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're getting yeah. there. We're getting there. Shh. So how do you guys don't tour? My wife. <laughs> do you guys like just book each like venue separately, or do you like work with the like booking company that does that? No, that um, like for our local stuff, we have uh, we have three or four different. Agencies. Agencies. Stuff, yeah. Mike, yeah. Mike Biglita, who I can't remember the name of his company, but we use him, and uh, we use Ron Hart, who's uh, Earth Tones, who did runs a place in Stewart, and also um, for my solo gigs, um, Victoria Lee, who's yeah. a girl who lives up in, in Stewart, um, a lady, I should say, a woman, I don't know. That's <laughs> <laughs> super awkward. Anyway, she's my friend. A badass. She's super cool. a badass. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, uh, she's. Um, Lives in Stuart and she books uh, my helps me book solo gigs. So we got it like a handful of different people that are agents, but then we also book ourselves too. Right. But for the out of town mm-hmm. stuff, if you guys get to where you want to do some out of town stuff, and, and actually, honestly, you can even check out the website for for in town stuff. We just don't use it because we have agents that, that do it for us. Yeah. Um, but there's a website called Indie on the Move. I don't know if you've used it or heard of it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a free account on there, and then they have a couple of levels. You know, pay levels. Mm-hmm. It's not a lot. I think the pay levels are like 15 bucks or 20 bucks or oh, something okay. a month. Nice, yeah. um, but literally, it's it's you know, I would say probably 75 percent of venues in each city um, register on there. And it gives you the capacity, the type of music they're looking for, the booking link um, for for the either the agent's uh, oh, email wow. or phone number or something. You can text them or whatever. Um, all that information is on there. And you can you can even do 
you know, if you have certain pay levels, you can even do the quick pitch where you can write an email that's kind of generic mm -hmm. and then just say, I want to hit this venue, this venue, this venue, this venue. You can hit, you know, 75 venues, hit send, and it says dear, and then it fills in oh, the wow, blank for awesome. you. You don't even have to do the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how we booked that tour is I went on Indie on the Move wow. and just sent out slews and slews and slews of of uh, emails until until something hit, you know. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we'd have, like, relatively good, contacts around the place to yeah. know some people and now we've done this we next time is going to be a lot better because sure. we met a ton of people a lot thing of those is, places we can go back to even so yeah unless you repeat it quite quickly or a lot of those contacts can kind of go stale it's like it's at one point i knew tons of people around the country but then you know you don't go on tour for a couple of years and it's like you know the it's not the contacts aren't that great anymore yeah. so we need to go back out and meet a bunch of new people and now it's like you know, we're in a strong position again. It's cool. Yeah. Nice, yeah. Yeah. Now, have you guys, um, like, uh, what's the furthest away you guys have played so far? Uh, we played St. Saint Saint Augustine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. St. Yeah. Augustine. Yeah, uh, we play Orlando every once in a while, too. Wicked. So, yeah, Where do you play in Orlando? Uh, we just played the Haven. Right. Um, played there we twice. Played there twice, and then we yeah. played Uncle Lou's. Okay, so cool. Yeah. Yep. Good old Uncle Lou's. Oh. Good old Uncle Lou's. <laughs> Have you guys been there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. It's about the size of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We played a place yeah, called the Sloppy Tacky Taco Palace. Have you ever heard of that place? No. Sloppy <laughs> <No. laughs> no. Taco Palace? Sounds lot, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> 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 a mouthful. Yeah, in Orlando. Um, yeah, I don't know. We've had, I've had quite a lot of fun in Orlando over the years. Orlando's got a ton of cool venues. Yeah, yeah honestly. Totally. a lot of cool venues that way, especially for original stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Will's yeah. Pub. If you Will's is sick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah. a fun venue to play at. Will's is sick. Play Abby's sick. Times. Yep. There's yep. so many cool places. I, I wish South Florida had, like, just good venue. It's so hard to find a good venue down here. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, though, you, you, get in with, um, you get in with a handful of good, um, you know, good local bands. Oh, yeah. Um, and you start, start jumping on their bills they start yeah. jumping on your bills and before you know it you're, you're playing out every weekend somewhere that's you know? yeah. yeah that's honestly kind of like the way to do it now like for when sure. we first started out we were just like kind of getting on like our friends bills um and now we're kind of starting to set up shows so it's it's yeah. been it kind of is nice like seeing the progression absolutely and the whole kind of do-it-yourself thing is yeah. if there's not places to play you just you can just make places to play exactly you know I mean? yeah exactly. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. like we have friends that do like warehouse shows and stuff, and yeah. I, I don't know like how, how they get permits parties. if they even get permits, but <laughs> yeah, they just yeah. do it. I, mean, well, I know Young Fiction does a lot of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do a lot of like house parties yeah, and stuff. They yeah. play a lot of those. Yeah, wicked. Um, the, Justin, um, the the guy who um, runs Live Music Community, and the man on the other side of the curtain who is currently producing this uh, <laughs> podcast is uh, dying to set up a venue connected to here, and you know make it make it happen at one point um he and i very nearly opened the place next door as a venue but it didn't happen for one reason or another but uh partly i mean partly but not at all entirely because i'm really busy with the but pretty much play every weekend so mm. i'm not you know, a huge amount of use when it comes to helping someone like you open yeah. a venue because it's just not around on weekends yeah. yeah but um you know at some point justin's going to open a venue and um i can't wait um, that's all sweet yeah, yeah we need we need more Yes. Yeah. Well, again, the biggest thing is like, you know, it, 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 with my son being 18, you know, uh, just being that awkward age we were talking about earlier, there's, you know, there's all these venues that you got to be 21 and over to get into. Yeah. And then, yeah. there's, and then you know, and when you're, you know, when you're 15, there's these 18 and under venues or whatever mm -hmm. that you can go to. There's nothing in between, you yeah. know. And yeah. so, you know, even the poor house, like they had to like ask those guys you know hey you know he's he's 18 is it cool if, you know oh yeah he's in the band okay that's fine no yeah. problem just make sure he's not drinking you know that kind of thing but but that's awkward and that gets yeah. that gets awkward yeah. and old quick you yeah, know? yeah you know? totally. I mean, it'd be great it if there was these like a lot of which i don't under understand it'd be great if there was more all ages shows and the venues will tell you like oh well after 10 p.m you know by law i can't have anybody in here that's under 21 that's a bunch of crap there's no law that says that nobody can be in there the law is that the person can't drink and that they right. can't be served they just don't want the liability of having someone young in there that accidentally gets served yeah. so yeah, i understand exactly. why they do it but there's no law it's a bunch of crap yeah. <laughs> well the, pr the problem is well it it just stinks because like a lot of the people that go to see live music are that age Absolutely. like they want to go see live music like we had a show actually it was this young fiction okay. <laughs> a few yeah. weeks ago so, and tough times yeah like literally 50 people got turned away because they were not 21 see, and it just sucks, sucks. It's, and it's, it's like music yeah. enjoyed by teenagers invented by teenagers sure yeah. the whole thing was like 40 yeah. teenagers you yeah. know what I mean it's like that's what 
That's I what said, it is. I, said, <laughs> yeah. I, I understand that their their whole point is like, you know, this 18-year-old is going to be here, this 19-year-old is going to be in here. They're not going to spend money on, on booze or alcohol or whatever. I get that. Charge them a little more at the door. Yeah, you know? I mean, exactly. You mm-hmm. know? I, I don't I I don't know. I don't understand why they do it. It's very frustrating, but you know, I guess all you could you know, we gotta do less whining and take more action, I suppose, <laughs> as well. You know, we'll, we'll get around to it. So how <laughs> so you guys were saying you play um you know, you play these like forty five minute sets and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like how yeah. much is that is does that like max you out or do you have do you do you have a fair amount of music and you can change it up and stuff or mm-hmm. Yeah, we usually change it up a little bit. We yeah. try not to play like the exact same set sure. every time, or yeah. at least like flip the order a bit. Um, yeah. We have probably a solid like fourteen songs written, That's like sick. ready to play. Um, nice. We have more ideas. We just so um, when it comes to like practicing your instruments individually, do, do you guys like sit at home and, and practice these days? No, <laughs> <laughs> no not, not really. Like if I do, it's because I just. I don't feel like playing Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a refreshingly honest answer. That's, yeah. that's fair. <laughs> I used to be forced to practice when I was little, so I'm, I'm all practiced uh, out, which is <laughs> horrible because as a musician, I'm not condoning that. You should always practice, but yeah. I just, yeah. I just yeah. haven't lately. And I was the anti-practice, kind of. Well, yeah, kind of. The anti-practice. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like Steven, I would like, especially like, 2005, 2006 yeah. is when YouTube was becoming a thing, and there yeah. were no lessons really yet. But you could watch like a live performance, be like, okay, they're playing here, so it's it's somewhere, it's somewhere in there. Yeah, you just sure. don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I at one point, especially when I was your age, I didn't practice that much. These days, I've picked it up again just because there's some goals I want to reach before my hands slow down, you know? Yeah. yeah they, like, hit a certain point. But, uh, um, and I enjoy it now. I don't know. I just kind of turned a corner with it. Partly to do with the fact that I kind of gave up drinking and stuff, and it's, I, and all of a sudden, it seems like a fun idea. Didn't you yeah. see? <laughs> <laughs> um, on the subject uh, of that, do you guys have any kind of rules when it comes to, like, playing and getting drunk or anything like that? Or? Oh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> we probably will. But <laughs> right. We just we haven't. Should. We, we haven't run into that. We haven't, that we haven't crossed yet. the line. Yeah, yet. it's okay, kind of okay. dangerous. Like we're like, well, we got We did that well, so I guess we could drink that much and do that. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, until the like day it kind of reach a, we until yeah, the day it becomes a problem. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that will be the line. But we haven't reached the line yet, which yeah, I don't uh, know is a good thing or a bad thing. Fair uh, enough. No, I'll take that. And honestly, like you know. I reached a line so long ago that I can't even imagine, <laughs> imagine what it's like to not have reached it. So just enjoy that, uh, enjoy enjoy that, that rarefied time. air. <laughs> <laughs> no, one day we'll have to slow down. But while we're here, yeah, might yeah. as well have a couple. Hell yeah, <laughs> man. Absolutely. Um, so have you got any, what, what are the plans? What, you got any future plans for the band? What, what's what's in, the, in the pipes right now? Are you recording anything or anything what's like in that? in the pipes? We, uh, <laughs> we, we yeah, we're working on a new song. Um, it's We're trying to get it out next month. Um, okay. Just doing some yep. stuff with it. Uh, cool. Has it got a name yet? It does. What's it called? It's called Burning Out. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. cool. I can't wait to hear it. Weird. And on the subject of not being able to wait to hear things, I think it might be a nice idea if we listen to Play Some Music. Sound good? Yeah, sounds yeah, great. Yeah, let's do it. Let's All do right, wicked. Yeah. Cool. Love 
561 Music is brought to you by Handlebars Bar and Grill. It's a biker bar in Sequester, and if you're driving up US 1, you come across it on the right-hand side. It's a, a little bar there. It's bright yellow. You can't miss it with the handlebars on, on the sign. And it has a long and storied history. It's been there. It used to be called Judy's. Um, and it was run by this guy, Victor, who sadly passed this year, R.I.P. Victor. And uh, then my father-in-law took it over, and he's doing a great job up there. There is a bike night every second Thursday of the month, and there is a jam every fourth Sunday of the month, if you're interested in that kind of thing. It's just an all-inclusive, any, any kind of music, any style, any ability type of a jam. And there's great beers on tap, and they're wonderful food. Bernsey, the chef, does, does a fantastic job. Um, if you're interested in classic cars or classic bikes, there's always that kind of stuff hanging around there. It attracts that sort of a crowd because it's called Handlebars Bar and Grill, so it makes sense. And, um, yeah, you should come swing by. It's uh, it's definitely a local spot and has a lot of character. And there's people who have been going there for decades and decades. It's one of those places that's um, a part of the furniture in Tequesta. And you should definitely come check it out. I um, booked the music for the place and love doing it and um i was a part of helping set the place up and um i'm a huge fan and you should anyone who is interested in biker bars or even if you've just never been to one and you're curious about what a biker bar is about you should go and check out handlebars bar and grill we are also sponsored by oasis root now oasis root carver bar is in sea grape square on indian town road and it is a carver bar. If you don't know anything about carver, it's a Polynesian root that you grind up and you mix with water. And it has been in Polynesia for potentially thousands of years. It's, a, it's an old thing that um, they used for kind of ceremonial and also um, sort of ledger purposes. It, it's meant to be something where, you know, that brings people together. Um, you all take a, a shell of carver and chink them together and say bula and have it together like that. It's meant to be something to bring people together. It uh, has a kind of an effect, which is, I guess, a kind of a slightly warming effect. Uh, and it just kind of makes you feel a, a, a nice. It's not particularly intoxicating. It's not like drinking alcohol. So the atmosphere in a carver bar is sort of like um, a cross between a regular bar and uh, a coffee house. It's pretty chill in there. Um, you get all sorts of different types of carver bars. Some of them are more like a club, you know, this sort of like black light and EDM playing. And some of them are more like a cafe. This is one of the cafe type of ones. It's it's super chill in there. If you're looking for somewhere to, I don't know, maybe go and do some work on your laptop or go and have a chat with friends, it's perfect for that kind of thing. There's a foosball table in there if that's your jam. Or baby foot, as they call it in France. And... Uh, yeah, Jim, the owner, is a really cool guy, and he has very kindly sponsored our podcast. So thank you very, very much for that, Jim. They also do a poker night in there. All sorts of things going on at Oasis Root Carver Bar. 561 Music is brought to you by Live Music Community. It's the place that we're recording this podcast in right now. It is a school, but it's also a recording studio and a live streaming venue and we can do all sorts of different things here if you have any kind of project that you're trying to get off the ground then we can film you and help you put together an epk and record a demo for you we can even record you know full albums if if you want we have all the resources here we have a green screen so you can do interesting music videos and stuff like that and some great equipment some really nice black magic cameras and proper recording equipment but really the thrust of the place is that it is a school so um the main thing that we do is help young musicians from you know as young as five to really all the way through to adults but we fo focus mainly on, on the young people and we help them learn what it's like to be in a band so we get them together and um teach them all of so individual lessons, but also in groups. And when we teach them in the groups, it's not just a question of, of teaching them how to play a whole load of covers. We help them learn how to write their own songs. We encourage them to make merchandise. We teach them of the things that could go wrong when they're at a, a gig and all of the little things that you wouldn't necessarily think of that go into what it's like being in a band and how to be a band and how to be professional. And it's 
great. You, we've seen great success with these kids. They play fantastically. And it, I think it, not only is it a, a good thing to for people who want to be in a band, just the life skills that go along with it in terms of working as a team and the courage to stand up in front of people to do something are invaluable. And we, you know, we see these kids grow into amazing young adults. We've had a, a wonderful time doing this and really enjoy it. Justin, who runs the place, Justin Hucker, is a really inspirational leader of, of young people, I have to say. And, and I, I really enjoy seeing him work with them. And uh, I'm proud to be one of his members of staff. We have, uh, it's um, Yaz, and um and me and and justin and mike scott and Corey and ryan are currently um the members of the team and we cover all the instruments um a few of us are multi-instrumentalists and then we have ryan who pretty much focuses directly on drums we've got pretty much everything across the board when it comes to teaching you how to be in a band teaching you how to play your instrument and yeah so that's that's live music community come by and check us out we are at 9091 North Military Trail, um, number eight, and it's Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, 33410. So if you're heading from West Palm Beach north on Military Trail, you, as soon as you go past North Lake on your left, just tuck into the first uh, the first little plaza there on your left, and it's in the corner. Come and see us. If you, if you just want to come and have a look around, we're open from about 2 p.m. to about it's, you know, about around eight or nine or, um, most days of the week. And then there's usually someone hanging around here on, on weekends too. So anytime you want to swing by, just uh, come and see us. Uh, or if you want to give us a call, look us up online. Just write Live Music Community and all of our details are there. The number is 561-951-6902. All right. Thank you very much. Guys, th those songs were great. Could you tell us a little bit about, um, about the two songs that you played? Yeah. Um, so the first one was Red. Um, yeah. First song we ever wrote. Um, that was kind of the one I was talking about earlier. Um, yeah. We kind of based the song around the idea of like Red, um, just kind of being a feeling, I guess, or a mood. Um, yeah. But both of the songs are kind of just about a relationship that you kind of just can't seem to like separate yourself from. Sure. Um, so 19 is kind of like around the idea of like being in like one of those late teenage relationships. Okay. You know, like you're both kind of going off to college and. Um, just do you find that most? Do, do you find most of your writing tends to be related to relationships? Um, so far, yeah. Yeah. Um, just kind of not purposely, just kind of how it's played out. Um, no, I think the, that's some of the most, you know, perhaps traumatic, <laughs> traumatic stuff that experience. happens to you. you know, when no, you're, it really is. When you're a young man, <laughs> it's funny, man. Mm. I, I've I've said it on the podcast before. You've heard me say it before, but like. I, I find, you know, I'm, I'm 50 and I find that like most of the songs I write are about jilted love and, you know, yeah. being left and all this kind of stuff. The stupid thing is I've been married 25 years, so it's, <laughs> it's not like it's anything recent. I'm writing about stuff from when I was like 18. Exactly. You know, still scorns me. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's like the worst time. And it's like that's easy when it hurts to the kinda, most. Yeah. And it's, I feel like it's easy to kind of like write around it, even if there's kind of an underlining meaning that isn't a relationship. It's kind yeah. of easy to like kind of just base it off of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. It's one thing that everybody can relate to. Yeah, it's just mm. being in a relationship that just didn't work they out. Can't screw them, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that age, and and just the emotions are so fierce. You know. Oh yeah. Like I, I still, I'm still have dreams slash nightmares about that time. <laughs> <in my life. laughs> no, it really is awful. Scored into my brain, absolutely. Um, so you brought in um, a pedal board, didn't you, for us to take a look at? Is that right? Um, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I have a picture in my board. Yep. Why don't we take a look at it and you can tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, oh, that's, that that's my baby right there. Yeah, right there. why don't you start in one corner and then work all the way around and tell us a little bit about these pedals. All right, so um, the first one's just my chromatic tuner. Yeah. Um, pretty self-explanatory there. Um, then I go to a drop pedal. Um it's actually really nice because I never have to detune um, with right. that pedal. It it drops your tuning all the way down to a whole octave. So, so if do I you need... use that just to go to drop D? And stuff, yeah, well? exactly. Well, I, if they're all like the strings are all kind of getting changed the same way. So like right. I could go like a whole step down on all my strings. Okay, gotcha. Um, or a half step down. 
Um, do, you use, do you do that in the band? I do. Wicked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty great. And then I'll also, it has a setting where you can go use both octaves. So you can use like the octave you have now and then the lowest one. Yeah. Um, so I do that a lot. That's kind of what I was doing when we didn't have a bassist. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I go from that into a uh, compression pedal. Um, yeah. I usually use that as like a clean boost. Um, yeah. Just sure. to kind of like boost the clean signal if I have a clean tone that I need to kind of punch through. Yeah. Uh, and I got a wah. Uh, I, I think it's a crybaby. Um, it's pretty, yeah, it is. It's pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's pretty, pretty solid pedal. Use it a lot. Yeah. Um, then I got a noise gate. Um, just I had one of those when, um, years ago. I love that thing. Oh, it's great. And yeah. I play, I play a telly a lot. So that single coil That's noise. A, yeah. yeah it, I had it, a telly deluxe and that it's not, they're like not quite humbuckers. You know, those, yeah. those things they have on them. Yeah. 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 And same deal. Yeah. It's noisy and yeah, it helps a lot. And just the the chugs you can get so much put you get that real like you can really get like oh, a yeah. biting chug with that. Yeah, no, tellies tellies are honestly great for like the stuff that we do. Um, yeah. Nelson always makes fun of me because I I'm play. Not <laughs> a, I'm not <laughs> <a super laughs> Nelson likes his Gibsons and he plays an <laughs> explorer. Yeah. 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 No, but it's 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 uh tellies. I love tellies. Yeah, I love well, I mean too. in conjunction with the noise suppressor you can make it work for sure. Oh yeah. 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 So I got the noise suppressor, then I got an O C D um overdrive pedal um that i kind of just i mean i use that as my distortion pretty much um it's a fantastic pedal um and then i go from that to a big muff which i actually switched out recently to a friedman nelson's friedman actually yeah. he gave me his friedman to use yeah. um it's a it's a bit of a heavier distortion than the ocd um that's kind of been my go-to distortion lately um right then i go from that to my small clone yeah. um which is the signature Kurt Cobain um, kind of sound. I think that was his pedal he used for... Um, really? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah it's know. the same pedal he had yeah. for uh, for a lot of the Nirvana stuff. We've got one, actually, here. That oh, explains really? a lot, because um, yeah. Justin and, um, and Hector were, were in a, a Nirvana, Nirvana tribute, tribute band. band oh, really? No way. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were in a tribute band for, God, probably... We, we were together in the tribute band probably about... Four Four years, maybe a little longer, and the band itself was together for like six or seven years. Oh wow, that's yeah. awesome! Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was fun. Yeah, they they've got some fun music. We play we play Breed every once in a while. Yeah, 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 yeah we killer. cover that. It's fun. Um, so yeah, I got that. And then I've got um, I don't even remember what this one's called. I think it's called a Dirty Laundry. Um, right, that's like a green guy. Uh, yeah, top. it's I got it for like thirty bucks at Guitar Center. It's great. Um, is it a, a distortion? Is it a, a an overdrive pedal? It's like a Leslie kind of. Oh, it's really? like a spinning speaker. Yeah, it's oh, pretty neat. cool though. It's it's got like a weird like chorusy phaser kind of sound. Um, That's sick. It's pretty unique. But it sounds really good. So I yeah. have it on there. And the yeah. big muff on there is it? And then yeah, that, big muff. <laughs> yeah, makes a lot of noise. They're great. Oh yeah. Yeah, we, we've got yeah. That's interesting. We've got that small clone pedal here, and I I, I really dig it. I've, I've been uh what i do an adult group here on monday nights mm -hmm. and um I, I have them uh use it for the police songs and stuff oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sounds great yeah yeah. Makes sense. yeah yeah sounds awesome so what do you guys got um have you got any gigs coming up that you like to promote or anything like that we do um our next gig is this two weeks no from now. two weeks yeah. from now we are at piper's in pompano august 27th yeah um, oh, nice yeah so we're playing there with uh rocks revel um, a band from Texas called Page Nine, yeah, um, and then a, a another band called Minerva. Oh, cool! Um, and then I think we're literally like every week from then on for like six weeks straight. I think we got gigs. Oh wow! <laughs> we're up in Jacksonville September third. Yeah. Um, the weekend after that, we're at Sunrise Amphitheater. Um, and yeah, we've got we've got a lot of stuff coming we're, up. We're uh, we're up in Jacksonville. You guys playing? Uh, we are playing at Kona Skate Park. Okay. Yeah, nice. so I guess they have like a little clubhouse they do concerts in and stuff. Yeah. So we we got together with a uh, band up in Jacksonville called Gentleman's yeah. Crow. And can oh, uh, can everybody get uh, like uh, all your dates and everything from your website, social yeah. media? And yeah, all yeah, we post everything on our Instagram. Um, it's just at Dirty Rivals Band, or cool. you could go to our website, DirtyRivalsBand.com. Cool. Um, Facebook, everything's just that, Dirty Rivals Band. Yeah. Oh, so thanks thanks for on the coming up here, it's like you know, it's a bit of a trek for you guys yeah. from Delray on a on a Wednesday night. Yeah. No, really thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Man. Well, we'll put all uh, all your all your social media, everything you put on that form, you filled out for the show. Awesome. Um, we'll put all that stuff on uh, on the show notes in the uh, 
in the podcast Sweet. version of it and on the show notes for the uh, YouTube version of it. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, everyone who's listening to this, uh, you know, make sure you check them out. And if you need any details, it's all in there. You know, yeah. you just got to yeah. look through the show notes to find anything you need to know about these guys. And um, yeah, it's been a real pleasure. And I, you know, you're, you guys are young guys and a relatively sort of new act. So I, I wish you all the luck in the world and you know not that, that you need it because i think your songs are great amazing. thank you yeah. so much thank, thank you so you much yeah. appreciate yeah. that what yeah. we got coming up um i believe we don't have anything friday we've got uh saturday o'shea's downtown west palm which yeah that's right i love playing oh, there. oh nice. so much fun i go yeah. there all the time for work <laughs> at lunch yeah cool <laughs> you gotta come like in the evening when we're I playing. Will. <laughs> yeah. Saturday. Yeah. What day was that again? I'm sorry. Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, yeah. Saturday let's do it's it. Saturday. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm playing from 11.30 to 3.30 at Cork on Saturday on afternoon Saturday on my own. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's in Hope Sound. It's, nice. a, uh, it's just a kind of like a brunch type of a place. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cool. Well, and as uh, as always, uh, you know, if you're if you're watching on the YouTube channel, um, make sure you like and subscribe. Um, it is up above Ben's head, right? there somewhere <laughs> um it's been there since the beginning of the podcast so if you uh, haven't noticed it then you're not really watching are you yeah. um it's uh it's there click like subscribe um the more uh the more subscribers we get uh if we can get to i believe i believe it's a thousand subscribers if we can get to a thousand subscribers then we can monetize the channel um and anybody who's heard the podcast knows that uh that our, our main goal here is is to promote local music promote local uh original music yep. um which is you know what we've been doing since day one it's what we did when we put on the music festival it's what we're going to do when we put on the second music festival coming to you in april so yeah. uh we'll, it's coming once, up once we the, yeah we're starting to work out those details on. so once that gets all solidified we'll let you guys know um but yeah uh help us monetize this thing um if you want to go to uh 561music.com. Uh, you can find all the past episodes on there, podcast wise. You can find it on all the podcast, podcast platforms. Um, on the website, you can also find there's a sponsor, uh, a donate button. I'm sorry, a donate button at the top right. Um, click there. You can either make a, a quick one time donation or you can uh, fill out the form and become a sponsor of the show, like, uh, like many uh, of the businesses that sponsor us. So, yep. um, yeah, like, subscribe, and uh, thanks for listening. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for coming, yeah. guys. No, thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Yes, sir. Yeah. See ya. Peace. Peace.